the Mediterranean, and in front of me is Egypt and the mouth of the Nile. For the next four programs, I'm going to be following this mighty river 4,000 miles right into the heart of Africa. Join me. Stay with me. You'll feel foolish if you don't. Yes. We're now officially in the Nile. This is just the beginning of one of the most remarkable journeys I've ever made. Following in the footsteps of other intrepid explorers, our expedition will take us to faraway lands. Spectacular scenery. Oh. Extraordinary people. Oy. Yes! The adventure of a lifetime. And finally, after 60 tough days, I hope to realize my dream to reach the source of the Nile. Here we are. Oh my gosh! I'm starting in Alexandria, one of the most famous cities of the ancient world. It's played host to history's A-list, founded by Alexander the Great, home of Cleopatra, Egypt's last queen, conquered by Napoleon, and visited by Churchill. Alexandria was capital of Egypt for over a thousand years. Today, most of what made it famous has faded away engulfed by the modern world. I swap my fishing boat for the train to take me south on the first leg of my journey along the Nile. So here is this extraordinary continent of Africa. As an army brat, we used to travel out to the Far East and back by ship. And we always came here, past Aden, up through the Red Sea, take on a pilot, cross through the Suez Canal. I used to look out to the left and just wonder, knowing that was Egypt, knowing that was Africa, knowing that that was the Nile, which, of course, you couldn't see. And I've been yearning to see this since I was a little girl sailing to and fro. And we're going to be following this colossal river not only through Egypt, because people say, oh, you're going on the Nile, how lovely you'll see Egypt. You go, Egypt isn't the half of it, it isn't the quarter of it. This journey will take me through five countries. From Egypt, we'll cross into the deserts of northern Sudan, where in Khartoum, the Nile is joined by the Blue Nile, and we'll take a new direction, following the river into the highlands of Ethiopia. We then rejoin the Nile in war-torn southern Sudan, continuing south through Uganda, pushing on into Rwanda, where my journey on the world's longest river comes to an end. It's an unbelievable journey we're going to be making, and we're just up here. That's just the beginning of this 4,000 mile trip. And our first stop is Cairo. To get to Cairo, the train travels through the Nile Delta, a huge agricultural area the size of Wales and home to over 40 million people. This precious land not only feeds Egypt, but also supplies it with their most famous export, Egyptian cotton.
the Nile in Cairo is crisscrossed with bridges. It's so lovely, because each time you get on one, which we're just about to Nile, you look down and see those fabulous waters. Look how wide it is. It's a huge river. And it's got this Nile green, which, of course, the French very chicly described as Eau de Nil. And it became a, f a, a fabulous fashion color, rather pale, sort of willow color. And Cairo, I mean, I can't get over it. It's the largest city in Africa by far, and has been for 800 years. Affectionately named the mother of the world in medieval times, 18 million people jostle for space in this city. Yes, yes. The pollution is so bad that it's said to be the equivalent of smoking 20 cigarettes a day. It's been on the tourist map for centuries and was especially popular with the British during Victorian and Edwardian times. Agatha Christie came here as a young girl and she was absolutely entranced. But funnily enough, she, she loved coming here for the nightlife of Cairo. It was a very buzzy, hot city. She said something quite interesting. She said, Cairo, from the point of view of a girl, was a dream of a city. The wonders of antiquity, the last thing I wanted to see, Luxor, Karnak, the beauties of Egypt, were to come upon me with wonderful impact about 20 years later. Now, isn't that just a sort of late teenage girl who wants to party? Isn't that just the words? You just go, yeah, uh, like, like we're in Cairo, you know, like where are the clubs, where are people hanging out? That's exactly what she was like. And she went, pyramids, schmiramids. Do you know, I don't think she did say that, but it's the kind of attitude. <laughs> To get about, Agatha Christie would most definitely have had a dragoman, a guide and translator. So this is Halili Market. It's a market and it's a local tourist market. Everyone come here. Yeah. It seems sensible to have my own dragoman. So allow me to introduce to you my friend Rami Ramani. He's an expert in all things Egyptian. This is a part of the old wall of Cairo. It's Ramadan. During this time of religious fasting, it's forbidden to eat or drink during the day. However, the Prophet Muhammad did allow one relaxation of the rules, which has become known as entertaining the fast, using a mishwag. Oh, here we go. That's a mishwag. Yes. It looks just like a piece of wood to me. When you taste it, it's not, actually. So basically, that's one for you, and I got one for me. Yeah. You oh no 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 no! I insist. Okay, I insist. Okay. So basically, yeah. You go. You go. In. Can you feel the taste of them? Not yet. No. What have I got to do? Bite it? No. No. As soon as you keep I going, keep it goes. Going. Something the juice will come out or something. Is it entertaining or fast? Yeah. I, I, don't you find this entertaining? It is. It's, it. It is. I think it's very entertaining. At the moment, it's like chewing a chair leg. I know it's going to burst into action in a second. Maybe I'd made the mistake of swapping. No, they, that's, they have a better price in this work as well. A better price? You mean you got me the cheapest one? I didn't know you had a better price. Okay, we want the better price, one. please. I'll keep this. I'm not rejecting this, obviously. I can just slip it into a, into a dish of twiglets at home and give somebody a lovely shock. Is that my new one? That. Good. What? Thank you. Chakron, thank, thank you for that. This looks altogether much more promising. How does it feel? That's lovely. Good. So I might finish this one in two weeks or a night or something. When? I think with you, Joanne, it might take a couple of years. <laughs> I haven't got two years because tomorrow I set off on the next part of my journey. But you can't leave Cairo without seeing the pyramids. Rami, my friend and guide, has suggested we travel to see the pyramids by camel. It's a real treat, he said. Mahmoud! I can't think of anything nicer. Mahmoud! 
He's brought me to meet Mahmoud Adel. He's been looking after camels since he was 12. His favourite camel is Charlie Brown. This is Charlie. Hello, Charlie. How old is Charlie? Seven years. Mahmoud, he looks absolutely beautiful. I think I do. I play with him, give them a shower every day. I think of them so much because I love them. Mm, well, I think I'm falling in love with you, Charlie Brown. <laughs> <laughs> like you, Charlie. Hello, darling. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> that was a lovely munching kind of kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Come, sweetheart. So soft, it's like leading a cloud behind me. The thing about these animals is that we're used to the sight of them. We all know sort of what a camel looks like, and we see them on Christmas cards, and we see them at the zoo, I suppose. But real-life camels in their own countries is... It's just fantastic. They're so huge, you see. They're so unexpected. Everything about them is thrilling, and I've watched the way that they settle down. Um, do you know those knives called Leathermans, which all kind of fold in like that? That's how a camel lies down. It seems to take its time, and everything folds up neatly like that. It's Ramadan, so most people are fasting during the day. Out of respect, I've decided to join them and not eat again until sunset. Well, the camels are eating, because that's sensible, but I'm not having breakfast. But actually, should I tell you something? I probably never have breakfast anyway. And, um... Quite often don't have lunch. So can you see how my fast is going to be a total fraud? I keep pretending I'm a theatre person, but I mean, I have done loads of plays, but often theatre people eat after the show. So quite often the first meal I get is at 10.30 or 11 in any case. So, hmm. you know what I mean? Easy peasy. It's OK, Charlie, it's me. That's you saying good morning. Thank you. Charlie Brown's looking to see where Mahmoud is. That's rather touching. Come, Charlie. These are the Ramadan equivalent of Christmas lights in Oxford Street. Good morning, ladies. Salam. Hello. Extraordinary how quiet it is. If you're riding a horse, you get a sort of clip-clop. With a camel, there's just a quiet, surging, pounding softness. Quiet as mice, actually. You can't hear their footsteps. This looks terrifying, but it's sail before steam for these ships of the desert. Thanks, guys. I think you probably stop for a camel. There are over a hundred pyramids in Egypt, but the ones in Giza are the most famous of all. the Great Pyramid took 20 years to build and is constructed with over 2 million blocks of stone. Over 4,000 years later, they still stand, a magnificent symbol of the might of ancient Egypt and the power of those who ruled. Wow, it's so busy! And you, I'm not sure what the pharaohs would think of us today. Hey, come on. Mm. The thing that strikes me is that here we are, we're just on sand. But where did all this stone come from? 
to build these massive structures which have lasted for so long. Well, Joanna, the, the stones actually came from two sides. The core of the pyramid would come from the local quarry here, yeah. but then it was covered with fine limestone, yeah. and that fine limestone had to come from further back. And the only way it could come was through the Nile. But the Nile's miles away from here. That's, that's now, that's in modern days. Yeah. At the time, the Nile was literally just beyond those pyramids just over there. Just beyond the pyramids? Yeah. One of the temples down there is made of red granite. And red granite comes all the way from Aswan. From Aswan? Which is 1,000 kilometers to the south. Gosh. And there are tons and tons and tons of blocks down there. The only way they could come over was the Nile again. How extraordinary. So the Nile brought the pyramids here, really? You could say that? Kind of. Yes, you can say or that. Or without the Nile, there wouldn't be the pyramids here. Of course. It was only a hundred years ago that the Nile flowed right past the foot of these massive burial chambers. Since this photograph was taken, Cairo has expanded, and what was the river is now urban sprawl. It's just about three o'clock and we're about to leave the pyramids because they're all shutting down because it's Ramadan and they close early today. And it's been a day of quite extraordinary splendor. I think the excitement of actually traveling here, riding here on a camel, was just thrilling. And this is, this is Charlie Brown, who's the most beautiful camel in the world. If I had money, I would buy Charlie Brown off Mahmoud. He'd be delighted to sell him to me. And to be out in these great, extraordinary sands with these pyramids behind us, one of the seven wonders of the world. I expect you can name the others. Unfortunately, because I'm so hungry, I can't. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Tonight, I set off on the next leg of my journey. Leaving Cairo and the pyramids behind, I'm going to take the train south along the banks of the Nile for 400 miles, passing through the exotically named Eastern Arabian Desert to arrive at Luxor. A lot of people have asked us why we're not doing this trip up the Nile on a boat. After all, it's a river and that's how you travel. Well, the truth of it is that if it's well over 4,000 miles long, it would take us forever to do it. So we're going to have to do this all in bits and pieces. But just now, the night train to Luxor sounds about as starry as way as you can travel into Upper Egypt, as I can think of. When I was very small, my worst nightmare in the world was standing beside a train track like this on a platform, and a train would come through in my dreams, and I'd see it in the far distance coming, coming, coming towards me, and I'd be dragged towards the edge of the track. And as it came whamming past, I could, like Anna Corinna and I, got straight onto the track. So it's always a bit of a moment waiting for trains. I get really nervous. I don't know why. I find trains really frightening. Freaked out, I don't know, quite relaxed, but it's really tough. To add to my anxieties, the crew foolishly put me in charge of the tickets and finding the right carriage. One, one, two, one, 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 two, six. Thank you so much, Thank you. Where do we start? I might just go along here. No, we're going the wrong way now. Now we're going the wrong way. Um, 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 um. Stop flapping. Could you help me? Which one's... Which one? This is 819. So we go right up to the end? Yes, yes, yes. You are kind. What is your name? My name is Mohammed. Mohammed? Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Mohammed. 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 Thank you. OK, I'll just go in 8 to 7. And we're going to let the people pass. Oh, my God. We're off. Look, we're travelling. Look, we're travelling. Goodbye, Cairo. Isn't that lovely? And my next word will be Mohammed. Yeah. Probably not a tactful thing to ask, but, but Mohammed, where is the bar? I might want to have a look at the bed, actually. Just out of curiosity, I'm not sure how it works. I'm feeling these things can suddenly spring down. And I'm not sure if there's a release valve. OK. So, that's lovely there, that's lovely. 
Good. It might be something you do when you've been to the bar. No, I... No. I'll do that much later, I think. Oh, didn't really want to sleep anyway. Go to the bar. It's down this way. My fingers always itch to tidy these bits up everywhere. It's in the same in England. Carry my marigold gloves. This reminds me of walking along in a ship. And when, when something's wobbling, the thing to do is it doesn't look very pleasant, but you walk with your feet slightly apart like that. Then you don't wobble. It looks as though you wet your pants, but it's OK. You're going along in a hell of a pace. Good evening. Thank you so much. What is your name? My name is Ezat. Ezat Ramzi. Yes, Welcome. Welcome. Very nice. Thank you very Welcome. much indeed. Ezat, may I have um, a Luxor, small Luxor beer? Yes. Lu Luxor? Yes. Is it Luxor or Luxor? Luxor. 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 Would you say that the Nile is a man or a woman? In Arabic, in Ar Nile, that's uh, uh, man. Is a man. Man, yeah. Man. Mighty man. <laughs> Mighty Nile. It's good man. <laughs> yes. The Nile for me, everybody in Egypt, it's very important for the life. The first in the life, for the cleaning, for for the the Ryan, yeah? the Ryan. Agriculture. agriculture. For everything. Yes. The Nile. Yes. Well it's very important Without... for everyone. It is for everybody in the world actually. Nile is our Nile. Possible you can live here in Egypt. Yes. The beer is small compensation for the frustration I feel at not being able to see the Nile as we cling to its banks, travelling ever southwards. Nothing for it but to get some sleep. Is my bed down? But first I have to tackle that you, bed again. Will you do this? Thank you so much. Oh, that's <laughs> Two pillows for me. Yes. Oh, that looks wonderful, Mohammed. Thank you so Not much. Yes. And in the morning, will you wake me up? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Not Here you are. Thank Good you. Night. Good night. First, we're going to turn on the music. I'd like you to hear the music. So I could sleep with my head just pressed. It's gone very quiet. This is as loud as it gets. And I might take off my shoes. So incidentally, if you don't want the ghosts to come in, first thing you do is you keep the sh shut covered and put your shoes facing outwards. Then the ghosts can't walk into your bed with bad dreams. One, two, three. sort of half in love with this river. And they all say, when you see it, when you see it. Well, of course, we have seen it, but I suspect what they're talking about is not, is not the Nile at Alexandria, at Rosetta. I think it's probably the Nile as she goes into Upper Egypt, round about Luxor. That's where people go. You'll sit for days and stare and dream and write poetry. I'm longing for us just to see a glimpse out of here. This is the Egypt I used to think of on board that troop ship as we came up through the Red Sea. Look there. This is the Nile. This is the beautiful Nile. In Lux 
Luxor, I'm greeted by the massive statues of Memnon, the rulers of dawn, which is rather apt, as we've arrived here very early. From here, the pharaohs ruled ancient Egypt for over a thousand years. At one end of the town, Luxor boasts the largest religious temple ever built, Karnak. At the other end, the most famous pharaoh of all, King Tutankhamun, had a hand in rebuilding the glorious Temple of Luxor. Today, however, Luxor is the center of the hugely popular Nile cruise industry. It's been going since 1869, when a young, adventurous man from Derbyshire, Thomas Cook, organized the first of what was to become an enduring tourist attraction. I wonder what it's like. Salam. Hello. Joanna Lumley. It's your key. Shukran, thank you. Welcome. 307. Look at this. This is fantastic. It's really big and spacious and beautifully done. The Nile Commodore, that's our name. This really is a way to travel, you know. Isn't that beautiful? So even though we're sort of cutting along through the water, look how still for the flags, they're hardly moving. The decks are painted green, the floor's green. It's very nice livery, this boat, very grand and beautiful. This is really a gorgeous way of travelling. You can hear how quiet the boat is. So you have a sense of just slipping through the landscape. I don't know what I thought a Nile cruise would be like. I thought maybe it would be much rowdier, much bigger, um, much more sort of bossed about. But this is absolutely gorgeous. People I've seen sitting quietly, reading at tables or having a drink. It's not like one of those giant ships. These are small boats, Agatha Christie kind of boats. I think Britain's been in love with Egypt and the Nile for quite a long time. And I wonder if that came from the passion for Egyptology that arose in the 1920s. And since then, people have longed, particularly during the great tour of the Mediterranean, but to go on the Nile, this was just something fantastic. So it's lovely to think that these cruises are keeping the river alive because there's not much fishing going on. If they're bringing money into the country, they're giving immense pleasure to people from overseas. It's pretty unspoiled, isn't it? stare at the riverbank forever, dreaming of life as an ancient Egyptian. But why dream when below decks I can actually be one? <laughs> this is Ancient Egypt Night, a fine tradition on Nile cruise ships. Nice trying on clothes, sort of in the middle of the concourse. I think that's lovely. Oh, okay. Oh, show me how. Okay. Well, this is suspiciously like a bathing hat. Um, I love it. I love it on other people, but somehow I look... This is the look that terrified me most of all as a young person. In fact, when I was a model, the things... Oh, what's that? That's nicer. When I was a model, the things I really dreaded wearing were berries. I used to try to get out of the berry shots. I like a bit of a... 
But maybe I'm coming round to it. What do you think? Hat again, but there we are. We might, we might get something. Something might. It's sort of something to do with having a huge face and a huge mouth. I've got to have help. You've got to tell me. I think this one might be nicer. I think this is better. Huh? Yeah. It's better for me. This one's... Ancient Egypt night wouldn't be complete without making a mummy of your husband. That's very good bandaging, isn't it? Look how neat that yes. is. Yes. This, one's this one's lovely. Love this one. Please. We need your help. So you are our judge. Joanna, could you please come to help as well? Thank you. It's not fair. So it, you are the judge. You want to tell us who is the winner out of these four mummies, please. We think this is adorable. Absolutely. It's wonderful. It's completely bound. It's completely mummified. A little bit of the head showing. Actually, if it's a man in there, then it is fantastic. A man. It's fantastic. even better because right across the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this is very good, impressive. This is very good bandaging right Actually, here. Actually, yeah, that is That's very That's beautifully good. done. Mm -hmm. But this is pretty impressive, I isn't it? I think this is probably... The winner. <laughs> yeah. We think that's the winner. <laughs> well done, that man. Oh, wow. The next morning, after coping with a lack of lavatory paper, I catch up with my fellow judge, Caroline Forrest. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is not vodka, just in case you think it is. It turns out that Caroline has a bit of an obsession with the Nile. She's been here over 20 times. What made you come to Egypt? Um, I'd always wanted to come since I was a child. Um, you know, you, you read in books and you do courses at school about it. And uh, it just held a, a mystery. And um, it was going to be the only time we came. It was going to be... The one-off? The one-off, yes. So you didn't think that's Egypt done? No. What, it caught you caught like a bug? I think so, yeah. And it's very easy to catch because lots of people come again and again. And what is it about the Nile, Carolyn? What is it about cruising on this river? The Nile's wonderful. You never know what you're going to see from one day to the next. Always the, the scenery is changing. Do you always come back to this boat? Always this boat. We're friends now. Yes. It's not just, I'm not just a, a guest, I'm family. Your family. Yeah. You'd like to just be on the Nile, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. Yeah, it's a lovely river. People could come and visit you. You could be Queen Caroline, Queen of, <laughs> Queen of the Nile on your own boat. That's my husband calls me. Does he? <laughs> Queen Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, thank you so much. I drink to you in water. Or should we admit it? Neat vodka. Oh, go on then. Thank you. I'll have gin though. <laughs> have I ever mentioned that the Nile is the only major river to flow from south to north? It's an odd geographical fact, but most rivers in the world generally flow the other way downhill, if you like, from north to south. So it's taken me a while to get used to the fact that even though we're travelling down the map, we're going up the Nile. It's all very confusing, but thankfully not for this man, Syed Kamel, our captain. Is the Nile an easy river to navigate? No, Mr. I don't have any experience. I don't have any experience. I don't have any experience from the time. نصور نحن في البحر فنعرف البلد هنا في عالي هنا حجر هنا فيه حتى 
واشن بعد عنا Now we see we've got والبحر يا ما يزيد في الزوادة حلو ولما تخس البحر لما تخس البحر يبقى مش كويس يعني حتى نعرفين إحنا يعني عند الحتة الوحشة تخف في المكان Why are we turning now, steering to the left? معشان العالي قدامنا ها ها الجزيرة قدامنا ها مغطية البحر لو رحنا هناك لو بروي يغرز على طول It's very lucky I'm not piloting this boat because I can't see this island. I can see some little tiny boats fishing and smashing their poles in the water, which is what they do. And then another cruise ship ahead, which has gone sharply to the left. So clearly we're going around, which must be an island, must be more like a sandbank, maybe. A very high sandbank. <laughs> On my journey along the Nile, it's been impossible to ignore the date palms, which fringe the river banks. It's September, and time for the harvest, so I've come to meet date farmer Mohamed Ora. Are these these are very good for eating? Very good, yes. Very lovely. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Well, they look pretty high up. Where the fossil, the high up there. Extraordinary, just um, just climbing up a tree without any branches, but obviously the spiky bits of the date palm. Whew! Now he's got a huge sharp knife. Wow! 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 <laughs> They're beautiful, they're sweet, but because they're not dried, they're not like the dates at Christmas time. Got a little white middle there. Just completely delicious. So I imagine these will be the very ones that I guess are dried and packed into those boxes with a fake. Do you remember in the middle of the box there's always something like that, which is a made of plastic and it, I always used to wonder why it was wobbly. It's just a beautiful plastic copy of a little date palm twig. But dates aren't just for Christmas. During Ramadan, the date is the first food taken to break the fast. And at Easter, Christians use the leaves to celebrate Palm Sunday. Having left the luxury of the cruise ship in Luxor, I'm heading to Egypt's southernmost town, Aswan. To take us there, Rami and I are hitching a lift on a felucca barge, a traditional form of transport. Captain Abdul Aziz and his crew transport stone and building materials along the Nile, just as the ancient Egyptians did 4,000 years ago. Rami, yes. I want to ask a question of Mr. Abdul Aziz. Is, the, is this wind quite constant on the Nile? It's always, it's always perfect, no. he says. So it always blows the, the boats upstream. Oh. Exactly. He comes with the current downstream uh, and the wind upstream. Very good. He's telling me he's, up, he's telling you that he's been here on this Nile for 56 years. You were a baby. Yeah. Yeah. He used to work with his father 56 years ago. Yeah. Is this the way that the stones came down for the pyramids on a boat like this? Mm. 
يقروا عليه كذا يطلع الحجر لحاله ويركب على الحجر على زميله Do you have any stories about the Nile? إنما البحر ذا بلاوي يعني بلاوي كثيرة يعني ممكن أنت ما تضمنش نفسك ولا لا ما ما تستجحش على البحر بالذات هي دوامات هناك هي غريقة وكلها سخر حجار هونتد أيوة ريت بعين هنا طلع لي أنا طلع لي واحد اثنين وثلاثة مش أول مرة واحد طلق بين المركب أنا ماسك في الحرب يا في مارد الجميزة حل المركب طلقها قمت لقيت المركب حاضرة scary هذا خوف ها؟ آه. حاجر هناك كثير ما. What do the demons look like؟ هو بيطلع لك ايه؟ يطلع لك زي اي حاجه يطلع لك ارنب يطلع لك ابو الحسين يطلع لك مثلا بس خلوي كبير اي حاجه يطلع لك زول عادي بصوره بني ادم خلق لابس خلق بس ايه؟ العفريت ده طبعا ايه؟ رجليه عامل زي رجلي الحمار عينيه ذي مش كده عينيه كده عينيه كده مش كده عينيه عينيه كده لتحت. That's frightening though to think of the demon because without knowing it's the same sort of it's the same old devil with little hooves although these are donkeys hooves so they're not split usually it's cloven hooves but it's the eyes that are the giveaway for the devil. It's the eyes. Do you have a mobile phone? Ah. So will you call me when you see a demon? Think about it, kid. Ah, kill him. I'll come and sort that demon out for you. And Salah. Okay. I'm beginning to get the idea that beneath the peaceful surface, this river runs far deeper than I thought, filled with legends, superstitions. Good spirits and demons. After six boiling hot hours, we arrive in Aswan, Egypt's Riviera, a playground for the rich and famous. Well, that is, if you like taking your holiday in temperatures that would fry an egg. The island that was once the site of a religious pilgrimage is now home to one of Aswan's most expensive hotels. Hopefully, the one I'm staying in. Fantastic. This is Elephantine or Elephantine Island, and there was talk that once upon a time, the Ark of the Covenant, when it was being taken away, rested here for a bit, stayed here. On Elephantine Island, so people used to come there for pilgrimages. So, Rem, you're going to leave us now. Unfortunately, I am, Joanna. You're going back to Cairo. Yes, that's it for me. Uh huh. Will we see you again, Eva? You will, of course, indeed. But I'm not sure about the days gone. Thank you so much for being Thank with you, us. Thank you, Joanna. It's been fantastic. Look, knock my hat off. You know, I'm fond of you, but not, you know. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Victorians used to flock to Aswan, describing the town as being on the edge of civilization. Which is how I feel as I prepare to embark on my trip into the remote deserts of Sudan. That looks lovely, Mohammed. Thanks, Mo. Shukran, thank you. Well, fantastic. Extraordinary journey. We've already covered over 600 miles, nearly 700 miles of the Nile in Egypt. Absolutely extraordinary. And one of the most extraordinary things about this sensational glass of champagne is that it's easily the last alcohol I'm going to be drinking for a bit because Sudan is a dry country. No alcohol there. I mean, it's dry, obviously, desert, but no alcohol at all. Here, the favorite map. Let's see where we've come. The familiar top of Africa, where we came in Rosetta, all the way down past Cairo, all the way down, and here we are at Aswan, and tomorrow, we cross Lake Nasser, the biggest inland man-made lake in the world, and then winding around and cross into Sudan and follow the river all the way upstream to Khartoum here. And look at it. There's nothing here. 
it's going to be very tough. This has been the end of luxury for me. We've been sitting in first class com compartments in trains, we've been traveling on gorgeous tourist ships, we've been staying in grand and delicious hotels, we've been forcing ourselves every now and then to take a small libation just to sort of praise the river gods and things and tomorrow I think it's going to be a very different story. Mohammed, um, the bottle, thank you.